Tiny Tarot. Hey, hey, what have you got to say today? I am Christina Smart, aka Low Key Magical, and I am here with Earl, the podcast master. Earl is with Toy Robot Productions, and Toy Robot Productions is responsible for producing the Tiny Tarot podcast. That's where you are today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you, Earl, for being such a great part of this podcast. Earl does a great job making it look good, making me sound good. Tiny Tarot's like, thanks, Earl. Absolutely. And we are here today to do the Tiny Tiny Tarot Weekly, sometimes it's a little more than weekly, podcast, and it's number 21. I am so excited about that. So let me remind you that Tiny Tarot is on a lot of platforms. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, so you can find us just about anywhere. And we're getting more followers all the time, and that's thanks to you liking, sharing, and subscribing. So thank you so much for that. Also, if you look, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is information uh, in the about, in the comments, on how to donate if you would like to. We appreciate your donations, absolutely. And, or if you would like to look at my information on Facebook about getting your own private read. Yes, you can have a private tarot read with me. My schedule hasn't filled up completely yet. I feel like as we're moving forward, it's getting tighter and tighter. I had another request while we were recording. So yay, that's going so well. I thank you so much for that. So look me up on Facebook if you'd like to. And we want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, uh, Miss D's Psychic Center, the Divine Psychic Center. Uh, go and see Miss D. That is in Rogers. If you see, there's a phone number there on the screen with an address. You can book a tarot read with me through the Divine Psychic Center, or you can just go visit Miss D and hang out. She's got incense and beautiful things in that shop. Hey, Miss D, <laughs> go see her and see what's up. All right, let's get moving. We are going into number 21. And as I was thinking about recording, what I feel like is a milestone. Because when you do start out with the idea of, hey, let's do a podcast. <clears throat> and, <laughs> and someone says, yay, okay, yeah, let's do this podcast. And then I have to give props again to Earl. Because he had seen a lot of my tiny tarot daily reads and said, you should do a podcast. Let me help you with this. So thank you to Earl that we are now at number 21. But how many times, I don't know about you, if you listen to podcasts, have you gone on and found something that you thought was really interesting and then you realize there were only four or five episodes and then it stopped? Or, or maybe you even get in really invested, you get to 10 or 12, and then of course it stops because this isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> because we'll, we'll this is. Really, I mean, this isn't. I want to say it's it's it, it really isn't that easy. There's coordination of people and there's electronics. And, blah, 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 blah. and then do people want to even see it? You know, there's that whole thing. So just the fact that we've made it to 21 is a powerful milestone for me personally, but it also feels like, you know, to a certain extent, hey, you've made it past another little toll booth and congratulations and the energy is just going to keep pushing from here. It should you choose to continue doing this and hey, guess what I do. So <clears throat> yay. Thank you so much to everybody who has participated and who wants to continue listening. It's so great. But okay, so we've graduated at 21. What, what does that represent, you know, in human years? It means I get to drink. I'm independent and it's a little bit more mature and I was thinking so what should the topic be and last night as I, I kind of channel a little bit usually before I fall asleep that's that relaxed time when ideas and things can really flow and I thought well maturity wise maybe we should talk about some real things that are going on in the world once again and war came up <laughs> of course <clears throat> but I thought wow that's such a big topic I don't know if I just want to dive into a tarot read about war and Tiny Tarot kind of popped in and said, well, hey, let's just discuss it here in a channeled moment. If you're using tarot as a communication tool, then how about I, you know, provide you with the flashcards that we feel would be best to address this so that it's less about chance and it's more just about a straight up lesson. And I said, OK, well, then I will take a complete channeled lesson about war. <laughs> That's Yay, nice and light, no big deal. <clears throat> but over the next half hour, 
what I got was really, really valuable and I felt could be channeled forward in this different kind of way. So what I want to say is the cards that I'm going to show you came in the order that they were visualized to me within this meditation, within this channeling about help me understand the energy of war. Let's take all of the little minutiae of who's angry at what and finger pointing and all of that and let's like I like to do, untangle that ball and really look at the center of what's going on because this has been going on with humans since, as far as we know, the first literary story, the very, in Genesis, when Cain and Abel decided to, you know, have at it. So it seems from that point on, conflict was part of, or at least that's the story that we've carried forward, is that this conflict is just kind of a natural part, and I want to understand that better. So instead of doing the normal splitting the deck into three and having Earl intuitively choose, I feel like this information was already intuitively downloaded, and so we're just going to get started. So the first thing I said when I said, sure, <clears throat> I'm open to this. Show me the first card that would be the best representation of how we start this conversation, and guess what that was? Was. It's the King of Pentacles. <laughs> and that made sense to me for a couple of reasons. First of all, how do we look at a king? We look at a king as someone who has the right to be in the position that they're in due to what? Bloodline, maybe? Or the fact that they have fought for what they have. So first, the first energy that came in is that when Let's say that someone is already in power. They want to maintain that. They have amassed a certain amount of comfort, riches, things that look good to other people. <clears throat> and they feel they have a right to keep it. That's part of it. And this is a one of those natural distribution energies that happens in nature. Those that do well continue to do well. And those that do poorly tend to continue to do poorly. It's like a Pareto distribution. Once someone becomes ridiculously rich, it just continues to pile on. And especially if someone is in a place of royalty. Like, really, they would just get richer and richer. Inheritance moving forward is going to continue to accumulate. So part of this is, and the energy will become out of balance. At some point, this I have a right to this, I have fought for this, it has rolled forward in my family, it has become more, it is comfortable, it is not for you, builds to a point where it creates what we have next, this lovely little piece of conflict. <laughs> it is the five of wands that came up next. And this is when you have everything you need, and yet those pieces do not seem to come together. There is conflict, and there was so much with this. You think mostly external when you think of this. Okay, here's someone that has accumulated a lot of power, a lot of riches, a lot of, um, I don't know, stagnation is also what I want to say. As if resources have piled and begun to stagnate because they are no longer accumulating the way that they're supposed to be. Like, like oh, this is a new visualization. Like, uh cholesterol clogging up in your heart, like excess fat literally clogging your heart. That excess fat originally, that was supposed to be energy used for the benefit of the body, but it's building up in the wrong places and it's causing a block of energy. And therefore, those who are suffering rise up and demand a change. One reason, so that's one, one. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Daryl's like, don't go to the next thing yet. This is just one. Because now we haven't even addressed the internal conflict that goes on within the structure of this, you know, king, uh, family, inheritance kind of a rolling forward of resources. Oh, that's a lot to say. But think of that tumbleweed accumulating or that snowball accumulating through time. Now, we also build up these familial resentments, right? If you were the firstborn, then you get to be the king. But what about the secondborn? And what about the thirdborn? And what about those who begin to feel resentment because they are not in this throne? This has nothing to do with, I don't have the resources. This just has to do with, why was it you and not me? This internal 
resentment that builds over time until it doesn't have to be those that are suffering because they don't have enough that cause the conflict. It can be the brother that overthrows the throne because it is simply that there has been so much resentment built up. So we have a couple of things. We have the physical distribution of resources. I mean, look at the fight. <laughs> So we have that, but then we also have the emotional element, the part that we just want to label as childish, where someone who has felt slighted in some way, and it doesn't have to be because they are in a lower place in society or because they are suffering materially. It's only because on the ego level, on the level of I feel slighted in some way. You have made me feel less. I am harboring resentment and therefore you must suffer. And I don't care who suffers along with this. And maybe it's an entire country. That is another uh, driver of this conflict. So, and those energies are both very, very old. This, I mean, we want to go, oh, this patriarchy. It's, it's a little bit more than that. It's, again, the energy that is built up in the universe where we have accumulations and then breakdowns, where we have, right, peaks and then valleys. And this is a time where we have a small group of people that are in power who have accumulated a lot, right? And it's snowballed over a long period of time. So we do have people that are upset and are, you know, taking action because of that. But we also have a lot of resentment and a lot of refusal to communicate and a lot of, you know, what do I want to say? Like behind the curtains stuff going on that's really childish that's driving a lot of this. So these were the first two cards that came out and I thought, okay, that's great. <clears throat> but then uh, I got this four of pentacles and i was i was trying to understand this it's another sense of not having quite enough like having enough but not quite the riches almost as if one one king of pentacles looking at another king of pentacles and saying yeah we're both rich but so even let's say that even if this hasn't been corrupt necessarily at some point you have this boy that sure does look attractive like when when i don't feel like i quite have enough even though i do your stuff starts looking really really attractive and that's when you have to defend it <clears throat> so part of this is assault and part of this is defense part of this is natural energy moving forward and part of it is the egoic reaction to that oh there's a lot happening with this so what is driving the not enoughness even when you have enough? Again, it is much easier for someone to maintain what they already have if they can keep a certain percentage, I don't know, fighting amongst themselves. Maybe that's the, the best way to put it. If you're going to defend what you feel like is yours, Oh gosh, here we go. If you're if you're really working to defend what you feel like is yours, then one of the best energies to put forward is to regardless of how well everyone else is doing, convince them that they're right on the edge of failure all the time. This is totally new. This wasn't in the thing last night. Okay. Let me get this message right. Part of defending this empire that you have built that you feel could be teetering on edge is creating conflict where there is none. <laughs> I'm getting it now. So let's say you have a group of people that are actually doing just fine. And if you, if a couple of changes could be made, no big deal. Nobody would be suffering. All you'd have to do is a little bit of adjustment. Everybody would be okay. But that's not the energy you want when you're starting to realize that the eyeballs are getting on this giant pile of gold that you've accumulated. So what you do is you convince them that they are all just on the edge of disaster and whose fault is it the guy that's standing right apart from like whoever it is it's each other it's you guys you guys are all causing that you guys are ruining the planet you guys you guys right so that's that's new that isn't even the way that the cards initially came in but i am starting to understand that creating that uh, false it, it really is it, it really is a false 
uh, narrative, that's what I want to say, because we work in stories, that's how we work, that everything is scarce or going to be scarce at any minute. It is right on the edge of not enough. Now, there are cases where, all right, let's say we have two empires and one does happen to be suffering. And if they are right on the edge of not enough, then yeah, there's going to be some conflict. There's going to be defending what I have built. Again, that is part of war. But if you feel like you are teetering on the edge of having to defend what you've got, one of the best ways of defending that is to make everybody really busy fighting amongst themselves. That was not intended, but that's the way it came out. And so I was trying to understand, all right, I get this. I see conflict and I see conflict. I see what's driving conflict. I see the necessity to defend what I've already built and I've seen, oh no, we're not gonna have enough and that can cause right, a back and forth. I completely understand that. But what drives the continuation of the fight when those of us that can kind of see these patterns, right, there has to be boots on the ground. There's a moment where there's a eyeball to eyeball, you know, where rocks are being thrown and bombs are being exploded and people are dying. And the two cards that I I got to address that energy was the Knight of Swords and the world. And the Knight of Swords is about upholding a code that's much bigger than you. And the, the swords are the words and the thoughts, correct? So whether it's through a legitimate belief in something bigger than yourself or if, whether it's through propaganda that you've been fed, Okay, either way, there's something driving the boots on the ground moment when one human is having to make the decision to injure, right, or whatever it is that they're doing in this act of actual war in the moment. They feel that what they are fighting for is bigger than themselves, that it is right that it is the right thing to do. And why? Because there is a bigger goal in mind for them. Whether it is, this is what gets me to heaven. I mean, that's really one of the big things that the world represents. This is going to be the right thing to purge the world of evil, to bring forth the peaceful world that we wanted. That's, that's their motivation. There's something that's driving them that for them is pure and true or the act wouldn't be acted out, right? We couldn't go to that extent. And whether that is a pure, I'm doing this for God, I'm doing this for God and country, or whether it's I am angry and you are the reason that I'm angry and I am so convinced that you that I'm looking at are the problem, that I have no problem taking this action, taking you out, because I firmly believe that that's what's gonna move us through. Something has convinced, and, and where do we find that convincing happen? Most of the time back from this energy over here. So let's act this story out for just a second. I, I have come to understand a little bit more about the story of the Knights Templar. <laughs> Trust me, this is, gonna, this is gonna work out in just a second. Because originally they were fighting for crown and country and church, right? I mean, there was an overarching, they understood what they were doing and their, and their truth was so big. And they were, they were, they were fighting for uh, heaven on earth. They were, they were doing the real, the real work that was gonna get them to heaven. And then you know what? The code, directions changed from the church. Directions changed from, uh, from uh, uh, the system that said, uh, hey, by the way, I want you to stop doing some of what you're doing. And what they were being asked to do now was no longer with their original code. And, they, and these knights realized that. But they didn't stop doing what they were doing. Okay, they said, okay, I realize that you guys are now telling me that the story's different, but my code didn't change. I'm still fighting for truth. Now you're not speaking truth anymore. I can't fight for you anymore. And that's when they had to be taken out. Okay. 
<laughs> Long story short, the ones who are the most dangerous are the ones who are convinced they are fighting for the truth, fighting for the truth so hard that it doesn't even matter if directions change. They will continue to move forward with the original goal. That's the energy that's put into place. These are the players that get laid out on the board when these plans of, of conflict are put into place because this group knows this, this, this group knows what's in power, what has accumulated the majority of the power, uh, knows how to keep that power. Again, it's been rolling forward and snowballing for quite some time. And a lot of that has to do with manipulation of the general public. And how can you manipulate the general public best is, first of all, you threaten what keeps them comfortable. And secondly, you appeal to that deeper part of them that can drive them and turn them into this force for you. And how do you do that? You, you find those things within them that really resonate with whatever their truth is. And absolutely, that can be manipulated. And that's what propaganda becomes. And, and again, thinking both sides think that they are fighting for the truth. Both sides are headed for heaven. Both sides are just going to make things. <laughs> and both sides are being manipulated. Absolutely. By um, you know, what's been in power all this time. And, uh, all right, so this is, okay, I understand this. I totally get this. I realize that there's a combination of natural forces at play, uh, a continued out of, out of control egotistical, right, and resentment, <laughs> and an entitlement, let's say that, refusal to share. Ooh, that's a big four of pentacles right there uh, have to defend the way that things are because if they change i'm going to lose what i built all this time so i'm going to manipulate and we're going to keep the people fighting amongst themselves and when we need to pull out those big guns and really tell them that they've got to get the swords well then we're going to do that because that's that's how we maintain what we've got going on well, I do believe that it's time to stop that. And that's another reason why the world card came out at the end of this is the ability to see a pattern, the ability to see the energy that is behind. And this is, again, this is kind of like a cartoon drawing of the way that the energy comes out. But let's just simplify it. This is this is what we've been working with since we were throwing rocks at each other because we wanted the better cave or the better hunting land or whatever it was. Whoever that we felt like had more had to be taken down. And whoever has more wants to protect it and so on and so forth until we've gotten to this place where it's exaggerated. It's cartoon-like. We can see it play out on the TV. They're trying to scare it. They, right, the ones with the piles of stuff are trying to scare us again right now. Well. All right, I see this, and personally, I'm going to do my best not to be manipulated energy anymore. I don't want to play a part in this cartoon. It may feel like it's happening to me, mm -hmm. but I've got more control over how my feelings and how my actions are manipulated and where my dollars go. And that's a big, that's a big part of this. And how do we get to that? So that's, now I'm about to fall asleep. I'm like, hey, Tara, this is kind of, I don't know if I like this. Like, this isn't even really a message I want to give. Here's all the stuff that's at play. How do we cross this threshold? Because I feel like those of us that are moving into what we are considering new earth, which would be a higher vibration where this energy of war, the way that we have seen it played out to this point, cannot exist anymore. Because this is, this is ridiculous. This has to stop. This is too much. And we know what it is. It's theater and it's bullshit. So stop it. So how do we do this moving forward? And these are the two, immediately these two came up. Two of cups and temperance. And notice that there's two cups here and there's two cups there. And the two of cups is about, first of all, uh, you know, coming to the table in fellowship. Wow. And remembering that the person that you are throwing that rock at, <laughs> this is the best way to say it, is a human being just like you. Like, it, it's not about I'm a member of this country or that country or I'm a member of this tribe or that tribe or my skin is this color or that color. We are all human beings and we are all sharing the same construct and we all need to clean up our own rooms and we all need to share. And we all, <laughs> this is kindergarten stuff. 
This is basic stuff. I was watching a, a video in, I don't know, mid 2000s. It was a bombing. It was a bombing somewhere in the Middle East and it was on the news and they were showing the bombs blowing up in the sky. And it was a shot over a highway, like a, a freeway. So the freeway was completely empty except for one car. There was one car on that freeway. It was like a little Datsun or something. I don't even know what it was. And it was hauling ass, man. Somebody in that car had something to do that they were out while those bombs were going off. And in my imagination, I thought, somebody's got to get to like to their kids, like get medicine to their kids or get their mom to the hospital. Or I just, I'm like, there's a human being in that car. Uh, again, we get shown some of these images so much that we get numb to them. But in that moment, I realized there's like a mom or a dad in that car. There's a human in that car who's freaking out right now. We're all human beings and we've got to remember that. And part of being light workers, and that's why temperance comes in, not to let yourself get overwhelmed by that. It's a lot of human beings that are in distress during a time of war. And part of that feeling is to make us, part of why we're being shown all that is to make us feel inadequate, to make us feel like there's absolutely nothing that we can do about this. And that's... <laughs> Again, not the case at all. Anytime that you're being told that you're helpless in a situation, guess what? You're always more powerful than you are being led to understand. Temperance shows us balancing these emotions back and forth in all of these interactions, coming to the table with the understanding of we have just got to get to know each other better. This is all about fellowship. This is all about understanding and kindness. This is all about realizing that our base motivations are the same. We all want to have clean water, food when we need it, right? To be warm when it's cold and to be cooler when it's hot. We all want to feel safe, okay? We all want to be heard and understood that we all have these same needs uh, and that there's no reason that we need to be fighting like this anymore, really. We have been able to draw it out in almost a cartoonish, easy to understand format here. We understand these energies have been rolling since the beginning of time. There's always been resentment and misunderstanding. There's always been hoarding of riches that need to be redistributed time and time again. There has always been jealousy of what is not ours. There has always been Oh, well, they are wrong and we are right and we must fight to make the world better. There's always been that, but we're coming to a time where we are smart enough to be able to see it playing out in front of us. It really does look like we're watching a terrible Ren and Stimpy cartoon at this point. <laughs> terrible! Yet, those of us who are doing work to connect to others online, to really connect to real people and get needs met, having real conversations, opening our heart when we are immediately told that something is bad and wrong, doing research on our own so that our emotions and our belief systems cannot be, cannot be triggered and used against us. Ooh, okay, think about that again for a moment. Being aware enough and well-educated enough that our belief systems cannot be like triggered and used against us. That's a big part of temperance, being responsible for our own emotions so that we don't get used as weapons against each other. <gasps> I mean, it's one thing to take a stick and knock somebody with it, but sometimes we are weapons against each other. And again, I'm thinking about some recent things. You know what I'm saying, I don't even have to use the words, where families sometimes were pitted against each other because suddenly these belief systems were triggered and now you are wrong and I am right. Science or whatever. So we're seeing it play out. And those of us that can see those patterns are going, yep, there it is. This is what we identify and refuse to participate in going forward. Again, I'm declaring my own sovereignty now. Thank you very much. <laughs> My beliefs are mine. I've cultivated them. Yay. And they're not so stiffly in place that I can't be flexible. 
that's what helps me recognize when sometimes things are being used against me a little bit. Ah, we play in the light. We are the light workers. Thank you so much. All right, so it's not that we solved the problem of war, but we're addressing it a little more in the moment. And when you're having a conversation with someone and they want to get in the nitty gritty about a certain thing that happened, how many bombs are dropped, la, 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 what do you feel about it? You know exactly. You know exactly the underlying thread of energy that's going beneath all of this. So should you choose to interact, you know where you can speak from your truth and feel good about it. You know you're not being manipulated. You know that uh, this is something that isn't going to be around forever because we are the light that brings meaning to the construct. That's what we are. And if we declare that war is now something of the past and that we are watching it in its death throes, then that's the way that it's going to be. Let these guys have their sticks and have their little fight because when the dust settles, this world is going to be really different moving forward. Tiny Tarot says it. I am low-key magical with a K. <sighs> have a peaceful and magical rest of your day.